the movie is a fantastic retelling of, of their uh, a reimagining of their uh, of, of how Ratchet and Clank first met. I think uh, since Insomniac first created the series uh, in 2002, they've sort of evolved it creatively along the way. So I think this was the big bite at the apple that they could go back and sort of just tell a fresh origin story moving on. And so it's fantastic. It's it's a great story about Ratchet, who's this small town lombax living in this really backwater desert planet has big dreams wants to go and become a hero and all of a sudden just fate flies through the sky one night whenever clank's uh, ship is crashing and together the two of them figure out how to save the universe from it it was really important to get i think a lot of those legacy actors that were that came in on the uh from the game as james and david uh jim ward as quark uh and armin shimmerman as, as dr nefarious is, is fantastic and so the, the best part about that is is that the characters already kind of exist so it's not like it's a matter of going out and trying to find some big name celebrity to somehow interpret this it's it's the characters are who the characters are and so uh, it's it's been uh, it's been a fantastic uh, journey of just figuring out how to get them on the big screen and carry those characters between the mediums because it just means that Ratchet lives wherever you see him. He's either in the game or he's on in a movie, in a TV series, whatever it's going to be. One of my biggest mantras with directing the film was, if it ain't broke, let's we're not going <laughs> to fix it. And there's a lot of things that were working that just work great because, for instance, the way the game looks, all of the creature box development art, it, it's perfect. Why Why would I ever have the gall to say that I could do it better. And so really a lot of it was just figuring out how to get a lot of those things on screen that have already been created, including those voices. To me, it's there's no other there's no other ratchet other than hearing James's voice. And so it, it would just, it would feel odd somehow. It'd be like Fred Flintstone coming up and all of a sudden having like a smooth baritone voice or something. <laughs> it's just not Fred Flintstone. Paul's a champ. He, uh, it was one of those things we both, I did direct, I directed all the voices and, uh, and Paul was one, one the, the character of Drek has a lot of teeth and he's just got a lot of like aggression, and there's like it's just it's almost built into his design. And so Paul just crafted this great delivery that really just took that and then pushed it to the next level. That's like one of the, the great things beyond with all these new characters is kind of how these people take these new characters and do their own spin on them. Um, Sly, because he said I can call him Sly. Um, he uh, he he uh, he had this great way because we had this this incredibly tough character with Victor, uh, and he's obviously no stranger to playing a hard really tough character. But I think the thing that Sly brought to the table was that he he knew how to do a twist on it so that it was fresh. I think it's one of those things where he has the confidence because he's played that heavy mm -hmm. so much in his in his career that now I think it's to him how can I do it interestingly. And even with Victor it was a lot of fun. We just he would oftentimes deliver a line differently than I would have ever expected. And Video games, comic books, they're really, um, they're active experiences. You control how fast you turn the page, you control where your character goes in the game, you figure out in the comic book how long you're gonna look at a panel. And so it's taking that feeling and that reality that you create in your head, and then figuring out how to translate that in the very passive medium that's film, where I get to tell you how long we're lingering on these things. And so it was great to sort of, um, there's an energy to video games, especially there's an energy to console games, where you run and jump and shoot and capture and do those type of things. It's not, it's not Call of Duty, it's not, Grand Theft Auto. And so <laughs> you figure out how can that inform the editing style and the pacing and the music and the animation. I think there's there's a snappiness and there's an energy to game properties, I think, that especially video gamers are just much more used to than maybe a more languid kind of classically animated film or something. So it's fun kind of combining those two aesthetics together to me. It was really fun with this. Fans should expect something that is a cinematic adaptation of something that they've grown to love, and and people who don't know it, I you don't even need to know a single thing about Ratchet to enjoy it. It's it's such a it's I love taking really obscure characters and obscure situations, and you find the humanity in it. And this is just a story about a dreamer who just sort of has a wrong dream and eventually finds what the right dream is supposed to be. You know.